Hey boys and welcome back to another Bleach Brace All video and today, today we have the character review for Oreo Society Nelio. Yesterday we uploaded the Orihime one and then tomorrow or later today we will have the Orion Society Kukaku showcase so stay tuned for that. So going straight into it, now let's talk about Neliel, the Orient Society version. So this version of Neliel is a Mind of Ranka with the Sorry Bakil ability. She is a melee character with a 12% recharge soul trait, which is already straight off the bat a good thing. Being a Mind of Ranka is already good as is because we don't have a lot of those. If you actually look at the characters in the game right now that are Mind and only have the Aranka affiliation, there are three, and that does include this Neliel. And the other two aren't really worth using. So as it stands right now, this is the only really worthwhile character that is an Aranka and also is a Mind character. Obviously, there are Espadas out there that also have the Aranka affiliation, but if we're talking about solely Arankas with no Espada affiliation, then this Nelio is going to be your best bet. So that being said, now let's move on to the stats. Let's see what stats this Nelio has got. And you can see right here, she does have some decent stats. Having a 1,111 stamina, 642 attack, 352 defense, 355 focus, and then 798 SP. Would have liked to see her get 800 SP, but it doesn't matter too much. Like extra 2 SP isn't going to make that much of a difference. You can see the rankings on the side. She has the 15th highest stamina and the 8th highest SP. Those two stats right there are the ones you do care about because the focus, the defense and the attack at least when sp character attack is always low defense and focus doesn't really matter too much because normally characters always get around the same numbers you're always going to get around 350 defense and focus so she's just got an average start on the focus and defense department the attack stat is low but that's expected for an sp character and then she's got a very good stamina stat and also a very good sp stat looking at her skills from top to bottom she has the following skills berserker plus 20 percent bruiser plus 20 percent debilitator plus five seconds devastation plus 40 percent fire duration minus 100% frenzy increased status element chance against heart attribute soul reapers and sprinter plus one so overall looking at our skills it's not bad the berserker is a nice thing to have means you do more damage especially if your character is one out of five which for most people out there your character will only be one out of five so that extra 20 percent berserker goes a long way in my opinion the debilitator is nice because you can weaken all your attacks so if you do weaken they're going to be weakened for seven seconds speaking of weakening you do have an increased chance to weaken heart attribute soul reapers so that's another good thing if you are using a correctly going against heart attribute soul reapers you're going to have an easier time beating the quest because almost all the time you hit them they're going to be inflicting the weakening weakening adds more survivability it's always a good thing no complaints there frenzy sprinter plus one the standards basically needed on these kind of characters devastation plus 40 percent allowing you to do even more damage on your soul bomb your soul bomb can inflict weakening so that even then you're doing more damage very good set of skills no complaints there and you're going to see that in the gameplay when we do use her the weakening really does help and if you have this character five out of five she is going to be a very good character for guild quest because she can and she will be able to nuke straight to the final boss with just one soul bomb which is always a good thing in my opinion that's why i do like to collect mind characters and heart characters that can weaken in the soul bombs because they are by far one of the better characters to use in guild quest if you do have them 5-5 now let's talk about the attacks that this Nelio does have. So going straight into it, we have the Nad String. Let's talk about that first. So Nelio's Nad String is quite simple. It's just a four hit Nad String, 375 Raiders, and the last hit is AoE. So the first three hits will be in front of her, and then the last hit ending it out will be AoE. So anyone around her in a 375 Raiders, which is pretty decent. Almost every character has this Radius. It's basically going to hit everyone around her. So no real complaints on a Nad String. It's not a bad one. Again, she is an SP character, but sometimes you are going to be forced to use her Nad String. So at least she does have a good one no complaints there and then her SA1 going into it is a lunge forward, a 475 Riz, 120% magnification, very good SA1. This is what you kind of want to have on your SA1, either a beam forward, a media collision beam, or a lunge forward. And Nelio does have the lunge forward. It's a very good lunge. It's kind of fast. I do like it. Didn't really find any complaints of it. Didn't find any wonky hitboxes. So a very good lunge there. Talking about SA2, funny enough, it's also a lunge forward. At this time, it's got a 625 magnification. So it's essentially a better SA1. So her first strong attack is going to be a lunge forward. Her second strong attack is going to be a better lunge forward, which is very good. The 625 Riddit is actually very nice because it does obviously hit a lot more enemies. It has a wider range to hit the people on the side in case you do miss them. And playing with this character, I found the two lunges to actually be quite enjoyable. Now, one thing I want to say in comparing it to another character is the Mind Zombie Tosha, who also has two lunges. The Nelio's lunge is also a lot better. I believe it has 100 extra more range, or I think at least 75 more range, which is already a good thing. More range is always better but i will say the two lunges on this nelio is a lot smoother than it is on the toshiro and i found that to be a good thing about her i really did like just flash stepping through the quest and then using the strong attack constantly on the move you're not really stopping to do a strong attack you're always moving forward which i feel like is a good thing 
And I kind of wish that the old girl quest was still here just for this Nellie L because she would have been very good in there. Having those two lunges would have been absolutely huge for her because it would have been, again, constantly moving her forward and she would have been able to beat her at a very good speed. But even then, since it isn't here, just for normal PvE play, it's not bad. Again, having those two lunges is very good. It means she has a lot of mobility and it does mean she's going to be clearing the quest quite fast. And if you care about clear time, this is going to be a good thing. Then looking into her SA3, I was kind of disappointed when I first saw the stats and skills, right? When I first saw that she had this kind of SA3, I was like, you know, it's not a bad strong attack, but it would have been a lot better on someone like Orihime or the Kukaku who are nad based characters who more so benefit from this kind of vortex But when playing with this character I did find myself liking this strong attack a lot more So if you don't know what it is it is a 1000 AOE radius in front of her It goes from a 1000 into a 675 it's Essentially, it's kind of a short vortex now I would normally prefer characters like nad characters For example the two other characters in the banner the Kukaku and the Orihime to have this strong attack But with the way Kellab made it it's actually very good So if you compare this strong attack and the Machine Society Ruka's strong attack, which essentially is the exact same strong attack, right? The Nelly Yells version is a lot better because it's a lot faster. It does the damage really quick. It doesn't really lock you into place. And essentially, you're just in and out. That's what I like about it. The Ruka is kind of has a slow build up. It takes a lot longer to do it. But with Ruka, it really doesn't matter. So this Nelly Yell having a sped up version of that is very, very good, right? And I really do like it. And since this attack is a short vortex, kind of a short vortex, it's a very fast one, by the way. So that's another good thing about it. About it. It actually has a very good chance to inflict the weakening, especially in combination with that skill she does have increased status ailment chance against heart attributes. Sorry, buzz. So that means, for example, let's say you're playing IZ, the final boss is a heart character, the final boss is also a sorry bar, and you don't have your soul bomb, you can use that SA3 and you're almost guaranteed to inflict that weakening, which in my opinion is a good thing because it adds more survivability, it means you can do more damage, it means your team can do more damage. So overall, looking at all of our strong attacks, the SA1, very good lunge, SA2, very good lunge, SA3, I feel like she got the best strong attack for her kit, in my opinion. She could have gotten a full screen strong attack around her. She could have gotten the full screen in front of her. But I feel like what she got was just the best case scenario. Because again, like I just mentioned, the fact that she does hit a lot of times on the SA3 and the skill that does increase the element chance against her attributes, sorry, but it's just a very good thing in my opinion. So honestly, strong attack wise, no complaints here. So now it's time to talk about the design of the character and the visuals of the strong attack. So starting off, what you see on the screen right now is the concept art for this version of Nelly Yo. We don't really get concept art too much, so it is nice that we do have it for this character. We pretty much only really get it for Seasonals. Would have liked it if we got it for other characters. I believe they did do it for Squad Zero, but they never did it for the Stern Raiders, which is a bit disappointing. But that being said, we do have it here. And this concept art, the design of this Nelio in general, just looks very nice. And I really do like the dress too, because as you can see here, the white dress goes really well with the light blue color that she does have on her hair. And of course, the bottom of the dress thing goes with the inside of the dress. The leggings honestly hit different on this character. Looks really do nice, emphasizes her legs. Same goes for her chest department, having like the, I don't know what to call it, they're not leggings, of course they're not, but, you know, having the same kind of texture there, hides her chest in a sense, but also does show it because, of course, it's an anime game, and I really do like that they show her back, because, of course, she's an ex Sparta. she has the tattoo there, it was an important part of her character when she was revealed, you know, she had that free tattoo on the back, I was excited, and the fact that they show her here just looks really nice. I do like the design, and I'm glad they just didn't hide that number free tattoo, because I think it's an important part about her character. And another thing I want to mention is the sword that she does use. So she does dual wield in this character, which I think is quite cool. You didn't really see Nelly L do that before. But what she also can do is combine the swords to become a double edge sword, which I think is quite cool. I would have preferred if this character became a transforming character because of that. Unfortunately, she doesn't, but it is what it is. And one little fun fact about this, which it does say in the Japanese text on the side, is the fact that the steel of this blade is the exact same of Nelly L's original sword. Just a fun fact, doesn't really change too much, but hey, it is what it is. And like I said in the Orihime video, Caleb always do a good job with the designs. The artwork team, the designing team, and also the modeling team always do a banging job when it comes to designing these seasonal characters. Yes, it is annoying that we got another Orihime and another Nelio, but I really can't complain with how they designed her. I really do like it, and I'm a fan of it. I was a bit salty at the start when we got another seasonal banner, but I feel like this is better than just getting another boring premium character. So no complaints here. I feel like Caleb did a banging job on the design. 
Now let's talk about the visuals of the attacks, what you're going to be seeing every time you play with this character. So I do really like her Nat String. I like the colors they use in a strong attack. So looking at her Nat String firstly, you can see here that she does a slash. And when she slashes, she keeps going, right? She does a 360 into another slash, into another 360, into a kick. And then she finishes off that kick with a double slash with both her blades, which does look really nice. I like it. It really does look clean. I also like the effects that the blades have with a yellow and blue slash. It really does look nice. And also like the little added effect of like leaves just flying all over the place every time she attacks. It just adds a bit of extra effect. There's even sparkles, which looks quite nice. So again, going back to what I said with her original design, just looking a bit elegant, right? She just gives off an elegance vibes even when she is attacking, which I think is quite cool. And then looking at our first strong attack, it's kind of hard to see, but what I do like, again, going back to her Nat String, is the blue slash yellow slashes that she leaves behind. So this first strong attack, I believe, has her going forward, a lunge forward, and I believe she's spinning her Zanpok toes or the blades in front of her. Again, it's kind of hard to see, but it does leave off like a yellow spark. It does leave off the blue kind of slashes around her. It can essentially warps her in a circle around her, which I think is quite cool. Um, and again, at the end, when she does finish off, she ends on a pose like you just slash someone up in an anime and you see again sparks all over the place and you'll see leaves fall on the floor so again there's not much to talk about in that essay one i can't really see too much about it but i feel like it does look nice so really no complaints there then looking into her SA2, which I think is the coolest part about her kit, it basically has her combine the both blades to become the double-edged sword, and then she just slashes forward, going from hand to hand, moving it in a circular motion, causing that lunge forward, right? I think that's quite cool, especially when you do look at her kit, where she has that lunge SA1, and then she has the SA2 that is also a lunge, but it's a better version of that SA1, and that's what you can see here with the animations too. Her first strong attack has her just hit with the blades in both hands, and then her SA2 has her combine both her swords to become a better sword, I guess, because double is better, I'm not really sure, but it becomes a more lethal attack, which I think is quite cool. And then finishing off with her SA3, what did she do? Well, she does a lot of things in this SA3, and it happens very fast. Almost, you can't even catch it happening if you're actually playing without, like, trying to really look into it. So her SA3 starts off with her jumping into the air. She combines those two swords into the double-edged sword. You almost don't even see that happen. Then she throws it, and right in the middle of the sword, a massive circle slash square symbol spawns out of nowhere. I have no idea what the code is. I'm sure it's some reference or something, but it does look quite cool. Leaves are falling over the floor. There's kind of glitter going everywhere. It does look nice, and then the swords somehow teleport back to her hands, and then she has it in both hands, and then ends it, the animation off with a slash, which kind of causes a shockwave, and that would kill the enemies. So that's kind of the two animations, right? The first part of the animation is her grouping everyone up together, and then the second part is her getting the Zanpak Towers back, and then ending it off with another slash. Alright, so now it's time to talk about the Soul Bomb, and I'm gonna have to try and speedrun this because so much happened in this Soul Bomb, yet so much little happened. It's quite crazy to think about it. So it starts off with Nelio holding both swords in each hand, and then you can see a glare on each sword, just emphasizing the sharpness of the blade. Really does look cool. And then we get a zoom in into Nelio moving very fast, use, moving her sword in a circular motion. Every time she does move the sword, there is a blue after image effect, which does look mighty fine. And then she ends off the first pose with both swords facing the left and then her boobs are just moving around way too fast this pose does emphasize her back which i really do like because obviously her tattoo is there and then instantly she moves her swords again and then she kind of slashes the screen into another pose of her crouched down we do see the sword very close up into our face and again the glare on the tip of the blade just emphasizing the sharpness of this sword you can see nelio squatting down the leggings are showing her chest is showing another cool pose and then after that, we have a medium shot of Nelio getting up, closing her eyes, and when she does that, she combines the swords. And when they do combine, it leaves a shockwave across the screen. The background actually lightens up, which I think is quite cool. It zooms out, and then Nelio starts spinning her Zanpak toe or the blades, right? And one thing I will say, if you can actually zoom in, her, her hand is just also twisting. So Nelio is breaking her hand when she does this, which... <laughs> Okay, but outside of that, she does a quite cool pose, emphasizing the legs again. Her quote is, let my swordsmanship dazzle you, and it does actually dazzle me. And then after that, we get another somewhat medium shot of her just spinning the Zanpak toe again. A lot of times, going from left hand to right hand, she spins around, does a 360, slashes the screen, spins the blade again, and then slashes the screen up. And then that's when it finishes off with her zooming out, and it's... 
it's a good animation. Again, not a lot happens. It's just her moving the Zanpakuto around, doing poses, but it does look really cool. In my opinion, even though there's a bit of fan service because the chest is moving around too much, almost as much as the blade that she's using, it's one of my favorite animations in the game. In fact, it might be one of the better special animations or Sobam animations from 2020 alone. It's a very cool special attack, even though she really does only like a couple, like almost literally just one slash, two slashes. But hey, it is what it is. Very good soul bomb. That's it for the visuals. Now let's talk about the best accessories. So this part of the video is we're going to go over the accessories and links that you want to use. Now, just real quick, you can only equip three accessories. I have seen a few people say, how do you get six or five accessories? You don't, you can't. That's just for sure. That's how I set it up. You can only use three accessories at any given time. Do keep that in mind. So the accessories that you want to use in this Nelio is the Zeta pill, Fortification pill, Masanga, a spider chair, tension tie, classic teacup set, and the headband. The headband you want to only use in extreme cob. The Zeta pill you only want to use when there are hidden enemies. Fortification pill you want to use almost all the time. Mistango you only use in guild quest the Aspada chair almost used all the time tension tie almost used all the time especially in cob and the classic teacup is used if you do have it it does give you 80 percent sp all these accessories should have 30 percent sp as the second traits and then as for the link, she doesn't have too many options, but you can just go with free recharge links. 12% recharge, they do wonders. It just works. You don't really have to do anything too fancy. But if you want to, you can use the Senka Aizen. It does give you full standard damage and 20% strong attack damage. Very good link. Senka Ichigo, a recharge and last stage. A very good link for Cop if you do want to use her there. Then she can also use Koga, Tenso, Jushiro, and Rose. All 14 recharge links. All of them are premium characters. So you might actually have access to all of them. I do. So if I did have this Nelio, I would be using those. And then last one is the Koga link. It is a 30 low stamina damage link. Very good link if you want to use an epic rage and stuff like that if you want to do low stamina damage. One thing to keep in mind, this will receive a resurrection literally next week. This time next week we will find out. So it might be even a better link. It could be recharge. It could be strong attack damage. And if that is the case, then this Koga link will be even better. So overall, what do I think about this Nelio? I think she's a very good character. Definitely, I have to think about it, but I'm pretty sure as it stands right now, she's a top 5 mine character. Very, very good. And I didn't expect that from her when I first saw her. She's a very fun character to play around with. The two lunges, two good lunges at that, and the first strong attack that is very quick, just means she's very fun to play around with. Yes, she probably isn't better than, you know, Hikone and the Bankai Ichigo, but they play differently. Having two lunges is a different kind of play style, and I feel like the good thing about her, it kind of makes her unique. So overall, really no complaints. I feel like Caleb nailed the job in this character, even though, yes, she isn't the best character in the game, she's still a very good character, and if you like Nelio, if you're a fan of Nelio, you shouldn't really be complaining. You got yourself a very fun character, a good character that will last for almost, hopefully, years, unless we get a massive power creep in the future. But I feel like Caleb did a good job with this character, and honestly speaking, even though I said it multiple times, really no complaints whatsoever. So overall, that was the Nelio review, the Orient Society Nelio. Very fun character. If you have her, congratulations. And that was the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. The Kukaku one will be out later today. Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>